now. And I'm curious to see yeah. what we're going to see for the rest of the tournament. Because, of course, I think especially once we head into the group stage matches, we've got a couple of big-name Terrans showing up there. Oh, yeah. It is going to be awesome. And I love what you say there. The Cyclones themselves have been such an interesting unit, bringing movement and mobility into the mech composition, but incredibly fragile in a pitched battle, right? We've seen them picking off units and gaining mm -hmm. a lot of edges mobility-wise. But if they ever find themselves backs up, back, just backs up against the wall, they have to stand and fight. The tanks just obliterate them, bio obliterates them. So they're kind of a high risk, high reward, I guess you could say. But it's definitely saying, hey, I want to be more mobile and kind of use some positioning, harass your air units, that sort of thing. It's really fun because it brings a PVT dynamic to TVT where the one, you know, the Blink Stalker Protoss player tries to shave off a couple of units and buy time against the push. That's kind of what those Cyclones are doing. They're trying to delay it. They're trying to stall that push from arriving. Because like you said, if you're just defending on your side of the map and you have to run into tanks, they will disappear in thin air. But you know, if you're mobile with them, if you're annoying with them, shave up some units, they will do some great damage and absolutely be worth their investment. All right, well, down here in the bottom right-hand side, in the blue, representing Mouse Esports, it's Hero Marine. Love the story that Ben just brought up. Casually played his WCS matches from a hotel room on yes. a very ghetto setup. <laughs> to me, that is so crazy. Like, I cannot play StarCraft on anything other than my own desk where I feel like, yes, this is my throne, you know? As soon as I have to go <laughs> somewhere else. I mean, the other week when I went to Italy to play in the Clash tournament, I was like, oh my god, everything feels so weird. And like, I cannot believe that some of these guys would play WCS games from a hotel room. Anyways, on the left top side, we're looking at the main base of the Korean Terran, who definitely seems to be on fire so far in this key. You know, speaking of the uh, setups going awry, the uh, the one that, that did the circuit recently was the old days of QXC changing his mouse mid-series uh, at an IEM. I'm not sure if you remember that one, but that mm -hmm. was one of the most ridiculous moments ever. And it is so crazy, but Hero Marine, he has been playing since he was like eight years old. He has been competing since he was a wee young lad. He's so, so immune to playing on different setups at this point. And uh, as is Keen, he's been around for a long time in StarCraft 2 as well, many, many times uh, in and out of Code S over the years. And here on Kairos Junction, going to be interesting to see which strategies the players opt for. Hero Marine is going to be scouting, and both players are opening up with a fast double gas. Factory does go down a bit earlier for Keen. Yeah, but I like that you bring that up. Builds. I mean, Hero Marine actually played quite a bit of Warcraft 3 as well. He was not a Warcraft 3 pro gamer by any means, because he was like eight or nine years old. But I remember him even being part of some of the exhibition launches that they had on some of the German game conventions where you could walk up and you could win a mouse pad if you could beat this tiny boy, but this tiny boy <laughs> was really good at Warcraft 3. Right? <laughs> now, I may or may not have actually tried to win a mouse pad and perhaps succeeded in that. <laughs> <laughs> not my proudest moment. <laughs> That's the one victory I will always have over Hero Marine when it was like nine. So. <laughs> No, but yeah, it's it's awesome to see him still sticking around, and he's pretty vocal about this himself at home. Yeah. Story cups as well. He's like, yeah, I used to be the young guy. Now I feel like I'm the old dude. Who's like, well, you're not that old yet, big <laughs> He's like, yeah, but all these young kids. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's funny how things change. Yep, he's uh, he's definitely got that experience under his belt now, and it is interesting that SCV has hung around, wants to come back in here and uh, potentially get a little bit of a follow-up scout. Lots of Hellions and Reapers on the way for both sides. And the Command Center is going down for both players on the low ground. Now, this is where things can get quite dicey with the Reapers and Hellions out on the map and more and more Reapers and Hellions queuing up. An extra Reaper, though, for Hero Marine. So he's actually getting very high. If Keen overextends here, he could get trapped. Yeah, he's gonna have to be careful, but obviously this is even number, so this is still a fight that Keen can take and get out of there. I love how crazy these guys are. They're always on the edge, right? They're like, oh, so I feel like I can get one more hit off and potentially pick up this unit. We're like, no, go home. You're fighting against the same amount of units on your opponent's side of the map. This can never go well. Because obviously the reinforcements yeah. of Hero Marine would arrive a lot quicker to the battle, but King gets out of there pretty much on scape. Really didn't lose anything. Both players are going to be waiting for that command center to finish up to, uh, of course, allow them to expand to that natural. We've got the Hellions, the Reapers coming in here for Hero Marine. He's going to be the one starting the engagement. That's a good position for Hero Marine. Wow. Keen a little bit too slow to finish focus firing down those units and two Reapers and a Hellion survive. It's so important that command center just finished up their pick. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to complete that CC yeah. without sacrificing four or five more SCVs, or you just have to wait. This is obviously not over yet. Hero Marine wants more. It's so funny that was an even battle as well but the engagement was just so much better for hero marine as he's now able to do quite a bit of damage five scvs go down already nice saves the units as well 
and that Depo even did get halted. Very nicely done. Only now does that Orbital Command Center yeah. start, because it was, of course, protecting the SCV that had loaded into it. Trying to get a little bit of chase down damage here is Keen. Wow. Hero Marine turns around. Oh! Micro, well done. Sure, he lost the Reaper in the end there, but it felt like everything was one hit away from dying. It's like, Hero Marine, if you line up your units there, all three of them gets one <laughs> shot at. I mean, it's safe to say that was absolute max value. Hero Marine would ever get there, and I love that you mentioned that. Okay, the command center did finish up, which was a good thing for Keen, but then he was very eager on protecting that one extra SCV. But that actually meant that his orbital was delayed for a solid 15, 20 seconds, because that's how long it took before those units were finally pushed out of the natural of Keen as well. Overall, fantastic start for Hero Marine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they've both kind of gone upwards into this uh, next stage of the tech. It's actually a very delayed Banshee from Keen. And that's a move which is a bit of a gamble, but especially after you've taken some damage, it can become a huge gamble. Now, why does that work so well? Potentially, Hero Marine pushes out with two Ravens, a couple tanks, a bunch of Marines, and you're not gonna have missile turrets. Why would you build missile turrets when you've got detection in those Ravens? So if Keen just waits with that Banshee until yep. the fight starts and then sends it in, he could get big damage. Couldn't agree more. There's absolutely no purpose for this Banshee to send it in right now. It's gonna get spotted, it's gonna get revealed. At best, you're gonna get one, maybe two SCV but that's it. It's so much better to just hide it because at one point nobody expects a Banshee anymore. This goes for multiple matchups where it's like it's too late for a Banshee to ever show up. So you don't expect a Banshee to show up and those are obviously the most successful Banshees out there. I mean, I think he still has to wait because if he sends it in right now, that is a yeah. massive gamble. He might be thinking the push is already on the map and he's he knows he's behind so he doesn't want it to hit so late that he just dies oh, no. to the push. But if he shows Terrible this timing. now... Oh, and he's sending another Banshee out down the south side. Cyclones, Vikings, two yeah. Ravens. I mean, that's two SCVs, and that's all he's going to get. It's exactly what you said, Kev. Two SCVs at most. The Banshee Does miraculously live. escapes on four hit points, and the push is moving forward, but this is so ballsy from Keen. Look at that army. You cannot commit with that force unless you pull the units way out of position. But what if he just sieges up very far away, keeps Hero Marine busy, and then it's about the Banshee in the main base? I think this is so much more about the Banshees than it is about this push, right? Yeah. Yeah, he can't oh, maybe commit Stim. With it. He might have gotten in range of Stim there. Actually, that is pretty nice. Indeed, is going to start picking away at this. There are Vikings out, though, so Hero Marine can push back those uh, that air vision whenever he wants to. Oh, the Banshee's there, coming in now. Wow. That is starting to do some damage. Hero Marine's just going to try and collapse on top of this. Yep, he's going to use Interference Matrix on one of these tanks. Actually, not the most beautiful engagement here by Hero Marine. I feel like he ate a lot of shots. I don't think that's... Okay, finally, that is going to be enough, but there's still three Marines. This was not as clean of a trade as it should have been for Hero Marine. Yeah. And obviously in the main base, he lost a lot of SCVs to that Banshee. And it's still there alive. Finally, he's going to be going down in a moment. Wow. These Vikings having to lift back off and they will finally, of course, shut that down. But at the end of that, Hero Marine's economy lead, not nearly as big as it was before. Almost identical work as his third orbital is finished. So we can rebuild and get those mules going a little bit quicker. But Keen definitely brings us back a lot closer to even in this match. Yep. After how much of a disaster start that was, I think there are some Terran players that after a start like that, where you lose the Reaper Hellion War so badly, and then you lose five, six SCVs and your orbital is delayed. If that's a random ladder game, a lot of people just leave. They're like, after an GG, you know, let's oh, get yeah. it. Let's get into the next one too far behind. Well, Keen just shows us that perhaps you're never too far behind. I must say, it, it felt like Hero Marine panicked for a bit. I think at first he really wasn't that eager to take a bad fight there. But then when the Banshee showed up, he's like, okay, I gotta make something happen right. Otherwise, yeah. I'm just gonna run around, maybe lose Tim. And then he went for it, but that fight just... Sometimes you just pick up units immediately, and sometimes it just seems everything is a struggle. In that fight, it really felt that everything was a struggle for the Hero Marine. The auto turrets did so much yeah. for Keen there. I mean, if he landed the interference matrix first, Hero Marine cleans it up. But that's what Keen was looking for. He said, let's just create a little problem on the north, create a problem on the south, and hit in the center at yeah. the same time. And that's where you find mistakes, even at this level of play, if you press your opponent to the limit. And funnily enough, a fourth orbital command center is already going to land uh -oh. for Keen. He has gone for an exceptionally weird opening build order here uh, with the, the fourth command center very fast. That's going to allow him to power up in the economy. And in this bio versus bio war, minerals could be exceptionally important. Just look at the minimap as well. That just really shows what has happened, the shift that has happened in this game. Suddenly Keen is the one confident enough to send units everywhere. He wants to make sure that he can keep this hidden from Hero Marine for as long as possible. And Hero Marine is obviously trying to recollect himself a little bit. It's like, okay, that was too hectic. That was definitely not as clean and good as it should have been for me. 
That's the fight that Hero Marine is going. Wow, okay. Upgrades. Yeah, yeah. Upgrade one, one. Good <laughs> one one against zero zero. Must be nice. Plus two already on the way here for Hero Marine uh, on the attack. Doesn't have plus two armor just yet. Army Supply is in the lead for Keen. He's up in the Siege Tank count. I uh, love that Keen is actually pushing out while he's up at base because this is the best way that Keen could ever hide effect. He's already mining of four bases, which is nuts considering how this game opened. Ooh, this oh my is goodness. A very ballsy push. Hero Marine, is he going to be in position? He's got a few Marines and tanks, but they're not quite there. The, the E base. The E base are on the right side as well, and that's very, very painful if you lose those. That's the only thing that Hero Marine still had going for himself in this game. Oh! Okay. That's the Raven. Matrix shuts down Hero Marine's Raven, and that's going to buy him all the time he needs. The plus two armor's being denied. He needs to click on that plus two weapons, and that'll make it all worth it here for Keen. Oh, uh, the Marines are stuck. Now the Marines are going for it. He really wants to get that eBay, and he will succeed yeah. in getting it. That means no 2-2 two -two upgrades. Sure, Hero Marine cleans all of this up, but don't forget about the economic advantage that Keen has been creating for himself. Four bases, four orbital commands, no, three orbital commands, one planetary fortress, but still, he's going to be able to mine a four mineral lines. Yeah, sick plays by Keen, man. He really turned this game around. And the engineering bays have not re, uh, restarted their upgrades till just now. Plus two weapons starts up. The second engineering bay begins as well. Hero Marine has a small army supply advantage, but is that going to be enough? He's pinned back in his corner of the map. Kane has got the spread of Marines. He's got the fourth base up. He's got the infrastructure going down as well. And uh, I wonder how much we're going to see the players commit to the air war here as well, because for now, it's like Keen's going to just steadily get ahead in that work account. He's going to get ahead in the 2-2 two -two upgrades. Can the Observer confirm real quick if Hero Marine still did not see that fourth base? Are the two Marines on the left side the first? Yeah, see? He hasn't oh, seen this man. once. Those Marines are the first time he's going to see it if he finally sends them up there. And I think at that point, he's going to be like, oh my god, how did that even happen after that start? I don't know about you, Pig, but Keen is leaving a very, very good impression on me so far. Yeah, I still don't think it's like one of these games which is a free win by any means, but he's just building advantages for himself, yep. and that is awesome. Especially, as we said, after the opening position, Keen now adding two more starports, and that's what I love to see. Uh, very curious to see uh, how many Vikings he goes to before adding in things like Liberators. Hero Marine still trying to just fight for any little bit of map control. He hasn't been able to put any pressure on, no drops, no Liberators, no sort of harassment. <laughs> Keen's still controlling this map. Ever since Hero Marine was active with those Hellions and the Reapers, he hasn't been on the other side of the map. I mean, he moved out once, I think, with the one or two Cyclones that he had, but that's it. Other than that, he's been pinned at home, while Keen has been expanding and being aggressive at the same time. And once again, considering how this game started, that is incredibly impressive by Keen. Yeah, Hero Marine, I mean, what worries me is not necessarily the numbers, it's the fact that he doesn't know this is going on. He's just going to down to take that fourth at the most normal, regular time. Hero Marine doesn't realize he's up against a five-base Terran. <laughs> he needs urgency in getting this expansion down. And I mean, I can't even blame him because it's ridiculous that Keen is a five-base Terran at this point. Two more Ravens being built, getting the Raven upgrade as well, so they'll spawn with more energy. That means more interference matrix, more potential other turrets as well to mess with some of those battles. I am really, really impressed by Keen. Not just this game, by the way, but overall what he's shown so yeah. far today. Game one against Clem seems like, you know, I was like, okay, Clem just picked up a nice victory. Keen really stepped it up in game two and game three. Game three was close. Game two was absolute domination. But what he's showing us over here so far, yeah, he's leaving one hell of an impression. It's only day one. But things are looking good for Keen. Advanced Ballistics is on the way here for Hero Marine. Wants to go towards Liberators to add on to this army for that, of course, anti-ground. But the Raven Viking additions for Keen make me think he's much better prepared for a late game air war. He'll be able to disable the Liberators and take them down to the Superior Viking count. He is starting to move forward on the north side. He's going to take out that sensor tower and then potentially clear these rocks as well. Uh, I think the best thing he can do right now is just to contain Hero Marine a little bit, right? And I think that there's almost yeah. nothing else you can do, because even though Keen has played, in my opinion, marvelous in the last six minutes of this game, that doesn't mean you can just run into tanks, you can run into a planetary fortress. The best thing you can do is just get up in those in the Viking count, get a few more Ravens out, and then eventually, while you're sharking around, find the best possible fight. Yeah. But just because you've done a lot of nice things in TVT, that doesn't mean you can just steam in and win. 
because no, Hero Marine no, is still maxed out as well, so things can be turned upside down once again very quickly. Especially with this style, Kev, right? I mean, you're, you're committing so much to Raven, Spellcasters, air units. This isn't a fast-moving army, it's a slow rotation. We see here, as you said, you just keep going around, applying pressure, and look for when the angle presents itself. Here we go, the Vikings and Ravens coming forward there. And Keen can use Interference Matrix. Whenever there's only a few tanks covering an edge, he can just shut those tanks down. He's gonna move forward here. Hero Marine dives, but a nice counter Interference Matrix from Keen lands on the single Raven of Hero Marine. Hero wow. Marine has the Viking advantage though. He gets those tanks sieged on the north side and smashes through that army. Keen loses the air war and loses his entire tank count. I think Keen thought that that wasn't the start of the battle yet. I think he thought he was still safe outside of range of tanks. Then suddenly there were tanks from the the south side already shooting. He's like, well, maybe I can still force this fight. And all the forces from Hero Marine came from the east side as well. And that was simply way too much to deal with it. That's once again, TVT is a matchup that does allow comebacks just because defensively you're so freaking strong. If your tanks are already sieged up, it's so hard to break it for another player unless you have like a massive lead in numbers or upgrades. But if both players are maxed out, obviously that doesn't exist. Yeah, both players wanting to play a very front-on style here. Nice rebuilding of the siege tanks from Keane. You can see he's getting his army back up very quickly. He's still building a lot of Ravens here. Meanwhile, the Hero Marine making four Liberators at a time right now. I think we're going to see Hero Marine with a big pack of Vikings, a bunch of Libs, which he might even leave in anti-air mode for the first few seconds of the battle, and then only siege them up after he wins the Sky battle. Yep. Can we take a look at the bio numbers real quick? I feel like Keane has way more bio, right? Yeah, it's 42 Marines against 18, but obviously in a straight up fight, if Hero Marine gets a good engagement, gets a good start of the fight, I like Hero Marine's composition a lot better. And Kairos Junction is not really that big of a map, right? It's really not that hard for tanks and liberators to get to the other side of the map. Look at this, and now you can have 42 Marines, but what are you gonna do, stim into nine tanks? Yeah, these Vikings come forward doing some big damage. The anti-armor missile was down so lips. much earlier for Hero Marine. The Libs taking out those siege tanks as well, and that allows these tanks to shut the planetary fortress down. Keen's mass repair wow. is to no avail. That base is gonna fall. Yep, it's too many tanks wailing away at that planetary, so it will go down, and these Liberators are really paying off in a big way. Hero Marine is losing the Viking War, though, so now he's going to be careful, because that obviously means yep. that these Liberators are very exposed, but I think it's safe to say they've already paid for themselves. Absolutely, yeah. Hero Marine with a more traditional army composition. Keen was looking for that slow efficiency of the Ravens. The Marines from the right side, though. Whoa, that's a big flank. The tanks aren't ready just yet. And then spread oh, is insane. That's massive. Wow, Keen, wow. that was beautiful. What a sexy engagement right there. He's going to clean up the last two tanks on the south side of this battle as well. That was awesome. Beautiful engagement. He hit that so well for so yeah. long, Kev. I mean, we didn't even see it coming until the last moment. So it was like, whoa, there's 60 Marines on yeah. the right flank. And just like that, Hero Marine pushed a little bit too deep. He thought he'd broken through most of Keane's defense, and Keane surprised him. These tanks are trying to get in position. Uh, Keane's, Keane's got to be careful. Yeah, Keane cannot go through this choke point. I think if he wants to attack the base at 6, or what, it's even 7 o'clock, I think that one was a little bit more vulnerable if he would have yeah. came in from the high ground there. But going through the low ground, the choke point, I mean, we saw what happened the last time. He's sticking with the Raven tech, Kev, still building these Ravens, but they're going down every single fight, and each time that's 200 gas. Now, gas is not necessarily the most important thing when you're playing Marine Heavy, but as this goes on, I feel like Hero Marine, with that superior Viking count, is just getting crazy efficient trades in these fights. So even though Keen's still got so many bases, he can't keep taking the bad engagements that have been going on so far. I love the double siege there from Hero Marine. If he would have seized up one tank, that would have actually gone down. But since he sieged two at the same time, he was able to pick up that one tank. He repairs as well. Yeah. Ooh, so sick, man. That's cute. The ship repair even here. I love that people have started doing that more and more. For such a long time, you would never spare the APM to do that. The players realizing just how efficient that is. And uh, the anti-armor missile goes <laughs> on the Viking that was already dead. Whiffs, hits absolutely nothing. Yeah, and this is, I don't think this is really a fight that Keen is, should be taken. I mean, Hero Marine feels confident enough to actually stim forward, because now he has way more than the 12 Marines. Yeah. He's actually been building up the Marine count very quickly, and he's going to push Keen back to his side of the map. I think this is why a lot of people will always say that TVT is the best mirror matchup there is. It's very back and forth, it allows comebacks, and I think we've seen a couple of awesome battles already. It's funny, because of the sensor tower positioning and the defensive setups, 
neither player is trying to harass. We haven't seen drops, we haven't seen liberators, because the players are just focusing on winning this frontal fight. They know just having a few more Vikings, a few more tanks in the right position can be huge, but Keen, using this positioning once more, is gonna get a very nice siege up location. He's gonna die forward, Kevin! Goes right on top of the planetary! I think that might be a little bit too much. He does pull back. Hero Marine's gonna try to punish him. Yeah, but Hero Marines, his Marines are in a pretty awful position. There were four tanks there. Tanks siege up very, very far in the back as well, but those tanks were untouchable. They were never going to fall. And Hero Marine, I think he made a brilliant switch back into Marines because he was a maxed out Terran with only 12 Marines, but he always had that option there. He had the barracks, he had the upgrades, so he was able to go back into Marines. I thought it was brilliant and he definitely caught Keen off guard, but that fight didn't go that well for Hero Marine. Yeah, Hero Marine still ahead in supply and workers though, but he does need to bust back out. Keen controlling the center of the map is opening up a lot of angles for himself. Hero Marine will need to make sure he doesn't get out position too much. He scans the army in the middle and quickly starts maneuvering. Meanwhile, Keen still out mining. Hero Marine, I'd love to see the units uh, lost in this Yeah, game, me too. Because I feel like Hero Marine's way ahead, and no, completely wrong there. He's uh, ahead in the gas behind in the minerals. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty close between the two, but it, it feels that Keen should have been mining quite a bit more throughout the majority of this game. But it seems like that's not really the case because I'm keeping a very close yeah. eye on Keen's money as well. He's never floating. He's not even maxed out. They're trading so freaking much that he's never maxed out, even though he's mining off six, seven mineral lines at the moment. Obviously, a couple start running out. I mean, the main, the natural, there's not much left. But I'm actually amazed by the fact that Keen is not maxed out, but still has so much income and he's never floating. Yeah, I think he has been dropping a few more scans than Hero Marine here with this aggressive positioning, trying to find an angle. Big anti-armor missile oh, yes. lands. And that's, of course, going to dissuade Hero Marine from taking a fight for the next few seconds. Hero Marine's got to be very careful here. His Marines are in tank range. A big volley lands. He's going to take the air fight. He feels confident that the anti-armor missiles are huge for Keen there. I think Keen might finally win his first air battle of this game. His Viking count managing to do so much bonus damage that the extra liberators come in. Hero Marine says, I am confident. And once again wow. survives with the one Viking advantage. Yeah. <laughs> I actually really felt that should have been a convincing air victory for Keen, but great job there by Hero Marine. Obviously the Liberators soak up a couple shots, but at the same time, they push the tanks away, and that was obviously the most important thing. They're gonna see up on top of it one more time. Interference Matrix being casted on this Liberator, but Hero Marine is taking phenomenal fights here in the middle of the map. There's Liberators being shot down by the Ravens. And finally, the Vikings do win for a second, but Hero Marines Rally should be able to take over those Marines trying to counterattack for Keen. Are they going to find a mineral line? Yep, that's an orbital as well, obviously, so you don't have to worry about a planet out here. A couple of SCVs will go down, but Hero Marine has quite a bit of money in the bank. Oh, that's risky. There's no Mr. Turrets in the main, though. So these Marines, they could potentially get something done, but it's safe to say those medevacs will absolutely go down, and Hero Marine yeah. is not stopping in the middle of the map. What a sick game. Hero Marine defending his base wide while pushing the front at the same time. He is not gonna be perturbed. He starts to push forward. The Vikings taking down a few of those. Keen manages to hold on to his central base, yet once again, as the dust settles, Luca D supply. Keen down, 25 supply there. He's managed to overtake in workers a little bit, mm -hmm. but he's definitely been way knocked down to that army. I love Finally, counter-attack start to hit. Yep, love that Liberator by Hero Marine. That's gonna be super annoying, especially right now. Keen needs his income, guys. He's 60 supply away from being maxed out, so he cannot afford to not mine off an entire mineral line, but that's exactly what's going to happen. This obviously means that the right top side is gonna be incredibly exposed. <laughs> Keen is returning the favor with his own Liberator on the other side of the map, but man, what a game. This is awesome. This drop in the top right as well going to start doing big damage, eliminating all the SCVs, and it'll do a lot of damage to the planetary as well. This position, very healthy for Hero Marine. That planetary fortress getting very low up to the right of this. He's going to finish that off with the Marines, and uh, it's just going to sacrifice a few of those and securing the bottom left of the map, but I think Keen's going to stab in with a Marine run by on the bottom left. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of SCVs as well. Ooh. Okay, good job there by Hero Marine. He's not gonna lose uh, too many of them. I think only one or two went down there. This Orbital, or this Command Center will go down. I mean, the game is still awfully close, but 
It's safe to say that Hero Marine finally dealt some real economic damage to Keen. Keen does still have this base at 8 o'clock. That is a mineral line that has not been attacked once. And I think that's one that is going to be very important. This base in the middle really seemed to cause so much headache for Keen. I think if he would have never taken this base, he would have had a much better time in this game overall. Yeah, it's been such a hard position to defend. That siege tank does come forward. I guess the uh, high sec auto tracking uh, upgrade has not been um, been upgraded there. The planetary not able to match the siege tank's range. We do see the Liberators, Vikings, Ravens coming forward through the center. These armies are getting massive. Keen is ahead in army supply right now. advantage, I think, for Hero Marine right yeah. now. So he's actually gone back to the Marine heavy style a little bit. Plus, uh, Keen have, has advanced ballistics as well. No, right? I don't think he has advanced. Yeah, I'm not sure if he does. He definitely made I know, the Hero Marine. Core. Okay, no, they do have it. They both have it. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, uh, I love that the SUV count has oh, gone down. Hero oh, Marine might have to be going for it. Oh, oh. I mean, yeah. since the economies are hurting at this point, they also know that the next battle could be the last one, because at this point, neither player really has the economy to rebuild if yeah. they take a disastrous fight. Yeah, I feel like Keen has identified just how scary this army is in the open. He realizes he needs to slow this down. He's got the tank advantage right now, and he's got a pretty good air army. I'm not sure who's ahead in that air count. And, ooh, what is both Hero Viking Marine? flowers there. You know, there's a couple of Vikings ahead for Hero Marine right now. Is it going to make up for the Ravens? I don't know uh, if it's going to be enough. Those Ravens landing anti-armor missiles, but the Viking advantage just so healthy for Hero Marine. And once again, it just his, his ability to stick on massive Viking wins him another air battle. His commitment to the skies really the secret to why he's been winning these positional battles. He's going to go for a drop on the tanks. Marine bombs, let's go! Whoa, that's a lot of friendly fire there. Key not paying attention perhaps for a split moment because he lost a few more, I think, there than he should have had. But he's still in the range of that orbital. It really seems that the lesson here is don't take that middle base. But that was a massive victory for Hero Marine. Keen started that battle with 13 Vikings. All of them went down. Hero Marine survived. He started with 19, I believe, and he, lo he left with like 11. So obviously a big victory there in disguise for Hero Marine. I feel like at this point, backstabs can be so deadly. They're starting to expand to these exceptionally exposed locations. The Marine battle on the left-hand side is about to start. Keen has these superior numbers, but he can't let himself get trapped over there. Yeah, Hero Marine rotating. The far superior Marine count, 66 versus 44. If he ends up taking that fight... That Liberator, that Liberator is actually sieging on top of the tanks. Ooh, he got like four kills there. Hero Marine here, I feel like he could jump on these Marines, but he keeps kind of just being a little bit afraid to go forward. Of course, the siege tank fire on both sides can be very deadly. I think that was acceptable though, because that Liberator picked off four tanks, and I think that's the biggest thing that was happening there. This Liberator is going to try to be annoying and should be able to get a couple of SUVs. Four yeah, five. three or four will go down, a couple of Marines will fall. But at the same time, these Marines of Keen's looking for an opening. And if one base goes down for either player, one base, 20 SCVs, your economy is, is pretty much dead. You can be knocked out of this game so suddenly. And remember, Keen won the first map. If he can manage to claw his way back through in this game, He's going to be closing out the series. Did Hero Marine ever see this base, actually? The one that he's about to walk to right now? Well, okay, maybe he's, he's got the Marine advantage, Keen. You can't take that fine. There's way too much there for Hero Marine. And exactly what I was talking about, a command center. About 20 SCVs in the open. Yeah. And that is brutal. Keen losing such an important piece of his economy. He was stretched too thin. He's got a base in the top right. And it's for nothing pick. I think that's the biggest deal. This is not something that costed Hero Marine anything at all. He was just able to get those Marines to the left bottom side, picked up the base, and he didn't even pay the price for it. He lost nothing in return. Yeah, all the Marines are still alive, ready to fight another day. And every time, I think Hero Marine with this Marine superiority just needs to keep looking for the mobility. He cannot rush into this tank count. If he catches Keen on Siege, then he can jump forward. And you can see he's been looking for that with the Libs this entire time. And anti-armor missile lands again, but these Ravens have just not been paying off for Keen. The superior Viking count doing wonders for Hero Marine. It with a stim forward did kill one or two Vikings, but Hero Marine maintains the advantage. He just wins every freaking Viking fight. Now the Marines are gonna help out, and Hero Marine will bleed a few more Vikings. I do think Hero Marine overshot a little bit on those Ravens. It was like 18 Vikings volleying yeah. at the same 
single Raven is like, okay, that's quite a bit of overkill. But once again, as long as Hero Ring keeps control of those skies, his tanks are going to keep him safe. Look at the spread of Hero Marine's army. He is just splitting up this huge army. If Keen moves into that battle line, he will be destroyed. Hero Marine flanking up here into the north hand side. Marine stimming forward. That orbital's going to go down. Keen is in desperation down. He's loaded up five medevacs. He's going to try and boost into the main base. This is his last ditch effort. And Hero Marine snaps his fingers and says, I'm a wizard. Freezes them momentarily. And then does, of course, have his production reround and his Marine stimming back. There's no tanks here. There's no way for Keen to entrench this position. I have no idea how not a single medevac went down there. I felt like three of them were burning in the skies already. But Hero Marine has the numbers to deal with this. It's not the prettiest engagement there for Hero Marine, but it also means that all of these units for Keen are stuck. He's not going to get them out of there, and he doesn't have the money to rebuild all of this. The supplies do not lie in this case. Keen with only 87 supply left. Hero Marine turned this game back around. It looked dicey for a while, but what a performance. Yeah, the air battles, I mean, really, if you're playing front on engagement in StarCraft, that's what it comes down to. Who can control the skies and leverage your superior range on those siege tanks on those Liberated Hero Marine has done it time and again. And now he says, I've got enough, let's finish this. Comes in from all sides, a gigantic arc of Marines, overwhelming, grinding Keen's army into the dust. And yeah, Gabe is up, up in 1-1 one, one now. What a tiring game just to tie up the series. Yeah, you can see a sigh of relief there as well. <laughs> Probably felt like the first three, four minutes of the game is like, all right, smooth sailing, you know, this is, we're going to tie this up. And then suddenly things happen all over the place. You're like, wait a minute, don't tell me I'm losing this game. And it took him so long to scout that fourth base. And I think by the time that he saw it, he's probably like, oh my, like what has happened? <laughs> I should have never been in this position in the first place. But the, the thing that I'll take away most from this game, other than the fact that it was an amazing game to watch, is that he maxed out the first time while only having 12 Marines. But he never skipped on upgrades, he never skipped on barracks. It was just a decision where he felt, I'm gonna win a fight with all of my tanks and the Liberators with the very quick advanced ballistics upgrade. And after that, I'll go back into Marines because then I'll play the faster game. But I just want to strike back. I want to take control of the center of the map. And that's what he did with his Vikings and his tanks and his Liberators. Yep. And once those units started to fall, he remaxed on Marines very quickly. I thought it was a brilliant decision. I mean, how often do you see a Terran that has 3-3 bio max out with 12 Marines? That's it. It is absolutely bizarre. You know, he was kind of losing the Marines in these skirmishes and saying, you know what? This is a front on battle. We've both got the sensor tower rings. We're not worried about mobility and counterattacks. We've got planetary fortresses on the edge. Yeah, it's all about the big tech units, the tanks, the liberators. And we saw the Raven choice out of Keen. It was his kind of answer to the late game. And there are times where that looks amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Where you come in, you find an angle, you shut down the three siege tanks that are covering a of base, course. and you get position and you start to take out a planetary. But in the air battle, it felt like they weren't nearly as reliable as just having more Vikings, having the Liberators. The thing is, he had to deal with Liberators and Vikings. If he would use Interference Matrix on the Liberators, well, okay, great, but he still was down in Vikings. If exactly. he would focus down the Liberators, he will lose the Viking battle even more. And this all goes back to a Hero Marine maxing out with barely any bio units, because it felt that ever since he won the first Viking battle, he was never down in Vikings for the rest of the game, and he just won every single fight after yeah. that. And yeah, anti-armor missiles are awesome, but if you're down seven Vikings, okay, they're not that awesome, guys. Like, Vikings no. don't shoot that fast, that that's gonna turn it around. Marines, sure, Vikings, no. Yeah, it's something where I don't think the Ravens are necessarily the wrong decision, but the Viking count is everything. Yep. That is always the number one priority. Hero Marine was so good at prioritizing that. He kept that Viking count up all game long. There was a few fights we thought he was losing, and there'd be like one Viking on red hit point standing there, allowing his Liberators to siege up. Uh, the Master of the Skies, Hero Marine, looked very, very healthy throughout. So that was an interesting map because it was just so kind of gentlemanly through the mid game. No one wanted to really force the issue. Keen was kind of looking for an angle, but he wasn't pressing it. Hero Marine was very comfortable to just slowly expand out. But once the action started in the mid to late game, things did get nice and wild. Yeah, I think it's safe to say it was a bloody game. A lot of Marines fell. But for the greater cause, when it came to Hero Marines, their uh, purpose. We're just waiting for Game 3 to start. I love these shots of the studio, by the way, seeing all the other players. I always love watching players talk to each other, going over replays. Yeah, you, you know, caught Scarlet just bragging about her win record there to fly. She's yeah. like, look at my match history. Look at, this, look at all this green. But I saw, I saw some red numbers in there. But <laughs> I always think it's very interesting to see players set up as well, you know, because everybody has their own preferences. And 
it's always cool to see which mousepad, which mice people use, which keyboards they love. Heating pad there ready, of course, to uh, warm up their hands between matches. Mr. 7K. Mr. 7K. <laughs> I love cool. this tweet, by the way. He sent out a very confident tweet. He said, I set off with top one, nothing else. That's nice. still some old school Stefano confidence right there. I love it. He took a break over Christmas. He's back refreshed and so such a quick return. I mean, that's what we always see with him, isn't it? We're like, oh, you know, he's taking a bit of a break. He's maybe not been practicing. Comes back confident at the top of the ladder so quickly. Just can't wait to see, of course, such a cross of these players over the next few days. And uh, we are going to be continuing this Terran versus Terran match. Here Marine and Keen tied up 1-1 one, one apiece so far. It's Ooh. been a slog of a day so far for Keen, who did, of course, have a three-map game against Clem earlier as well. Yep, and those were pretty long games, especially the last one. I mean, the second one was domination, but the first one took a while. And these TVT series can be quite draining, especially in a big stake tournament like this, right? Players oh, yeah. come here with big expectations. The moment you play a grueling three-game best of three, it's like, okay, that's the first of how many more do I have to play? Now, it's not that bad if you make it through the winner bracket, but if you drop to the lower bracket early on, First of all, only one player qualifies through the lower bracket. Second of all, you're going to have to win like three more series. So that's why this is an incredibly important map for both these guys. We're looking at the main base of our German Terran player. We know him as Big Gabe. You guys know him as Hero Marine. But one day, we will all know him as Big Gabe. Soon. It's just a matter of familiarity. <laughs> of course, down here in the bottom right hand side in the red, he is keen. He's a keen being. Ready to steam. He's been looking pretty good so far. Keen is one of these guys who, you know, it's funny because he, he has these absolute flashes of brilliance, mm -hmm. um, but he's often stopped by just these these gods of the game. And he has a few unfortunate moments. I even think of like last year, him losing in GSL to like SOS Blink DTs when that strategy debuted. And like, you're just like, Kane was playing so brilliantly and just wasn't sure how to deal with these teleporting invisible dudes that just tore him apart. But he is such a solid player. He's had a lot of good wins in the past, so... That was I'm on Blackpink, can, right? Uh, yeah, 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 it was definitely Blackpink, yeah. I, I remember the interview afterwards. We were like, oh my god, that's, that's such a cool strategy. How did you come up with that? He's like, well, I was kind of bored, you know, in the round of 32, <laughs> so I decided to switch it up. <laughs> I just love it how some people live for years of round of 32 as like one of the craziest, you know, most important days they have in SOS. He's bored in the round of 32. <laughs> I love it. Dollar sign, or dollar sign, keeping it fresh, man. He'll be playing later today, right? He's in the second bracket. Yeah, I believe so. Opening uh, match versus ours. Or yes. A AWRS, a Ukrainian Terran that likes to actually play mech. Has a couple of very gnarly mech builds. Mech versus SOS. I can imagine the chaos that ensues in that one. <laughs> I feel like SOS would be like really good at dismantling it, but if you don't know it's coming, some of these uh, yeah. wild builds can definitely surprise. Like mech is not good if Protoss has the perfect opening against it and scouts it at the four minute mark. But if you can keep it hidden until like minute six or seven, there's actually a couple of very gnarly builds and I think I'm really blind or hard counter even some of the traditional standard Protoss openings. Now earlier today when Keen played on Cyber Forest, he actually opened up with multiple factories, went crazy on the Cyclones, had a lot of them, went for a Macfield Accelerator as well and basically just drove around forever, sniped command centers, sniped tanks. It was a combination of a lot of Ravens and a lot of Cyclones eventually into his own tanks, into his own Vikings. I loved it. But I don't know if that's something he wanted to use against Clem because Clem used mech against him in game one, or if he's gonna bust it out this time as well with his hero marine. Well, these Reapers looking for an angle, but they are shut down. One Ooh, of the Reapers one does of fall. Good pick up there for hero marine. Hero marine's been mining a bit more gas uh, throughout this uh, stage. He is adding more Reapers and, of course, is, I believe, gonna be going up into Ravens. Keen, on the other hand, does have his own starport finishing. Very similar build orders, but once again, the Reaper advantage already there. Not because he sniped a Reaper, but also because he built an extra one as and well. The, and the other Reaper was out of position for Keen, and that's disastrous. That means that once again, both his helis are exposed. Can the command center finish up? Oh, no, not this no. time. And this is something that we went on for a long time ago. Okay, those two Marines on the high ground, they were just worth their weight in gold, but Hero Marine can back off. He's gonna try to chase down the Reaper. Good, good snipe, micro, yeah, good, good snipe at least on one of those Reapers. Once again, a rough start for Keen, but that could have even been worse. I think if Hero Marine doesn't run up that ramp, yeah. but is actually satisfied with not letting that CC Phoenix up, then his Reapers regenerate, and this goes on for a little bit longer, and it would be even a lot worse for Keen. 
Every second that goes by there is a nightmare. So Keen yep. happy to re-establish control of that natural. Cyclone and Raven on the way for Hero Marine. It's a tank and a Raven on the way for Keen. Both players looking to stabilize. The third gas coming down quite early for both sides as they want to continue that tech unit production. And I would not be surprised to see third command centers going down. In fact, both players just putting out some uh, spotting things on the edges of their bases. Command center drops first for Hero Marine. Mm -hmm. Does have that mineral advantage from his early pressure. Yep. No, I think this is one moment where Hero Marine is already beating himself up a little bit. He's like, why did I go up that ramp? What are you hoping for there? Of course, you can get a great scout. And there are some rare moments where maybe the Marines are not out yet and you can get one more SUV that's finishing something that is building near that ramp. But if Hero Marine would have been a little less greedy and just be like, all right, I know that every second that goes by right now, like you said, is a nightmare for my opponent. He can create an advantage that's twice as big as the one that he currently has. Yeah, a lot of Terran players out there, I think, know those feels of running up the ramp, trying to get a bit more damage. And because if those Marines have edge. to run down the ramp, they're awful. They have to run into two Reapers and a Hellion. They will not be able to get their first shots off. But the moment you have high ground advantage, obviously the Reapers and the Hellions cannot look up that ramp. The Marines get the first volley up, and that's when you already have to retreat your units as a Terran player. So Hero Arena, tad too greedy there, but still a phenomenal start once again. And a second and third factory going down actually before third command center here. For Cyclones! Keen. Looks like it, Kev. Uh, Viking production quite healthily on the way for Keen as well. And uh, double engineering bay and stim on the way for Hero Marine. Bioverse mech here on Cyber Forest. This is one of the smaller rush distances, especially once you're on three base first three base. I feel like it's such a small distance to your opponent. And there's a lot of ledges. There's a lot of these nice kind of choke points for tanks to use at the same time. Plenty of room for Marines to kind of flank in from behind for drops to hit in as well. Now, Pick, I don't know how you feel about this, but I feel like bolts, like the one that Keen is going for here, he's already researching Mac Build to Accelerator. I think all of that stuff is awesome if it A comes as a surprise, B you keep it hidden, and C you're at least even in the game. But I think the start of this game wasn't that pretty. And I don't know if I would really feel comfortable building five, six, seven, maybe even ten cyclones if I didn't have a good start into the beginning of this game, because are Cyclones really units that can turn things around? Are they good in turning a disadvantage into an advantage? You know, it's, it's so dependent on those engagements. So I agree with you. I think it definitely is not as easy to do it in this scenario. He's got to hide what he's doing as best as possible. He's got to get a good engagement to the start here or there. Cyclones of Hero Marine actually taking a nice beginning to the engagement. Oh, poking very aggressively forward yeah. there for Hero Marine. Does end up keeping both his Cyclones alive. Might drop a few Reaper grenades as well on those Marines. He's slowing down the push. Keen is going to veer to the right hand side and the left. His own mag field well on the way. Remember, there's no third command center for Keen. Nope. Keen is looking for big damage in the very oh, near future. If he would seize up right now, but obviously the Ravens are very scary. There's enough interference matrix to disable those tanks. Hero Marine, that's very risky because Stim is not done yet. Oh. It's almost done, but it's not yeah, the Ravens on both sides. Who's going to land the interference matrixes? It's just mass auto turret for both sides. And that does favor Big Gabe, I believe, with the earlier siege. If he can win the air wow. or keep his Vikings alive, he slowed the push down. Is it enough? I don't know. There's actually a lot of tanks coming in here. He's too greedy, man. Hero Marine hits. had no idea that Keen is two-basing this. Yeah. I mean, Hero Marine is 20 SCPs ahead. That's great, but he's got no army. He really didn't need to fight there. I think he underestimated how big that army was. And I think he really did not expect Keen to stay on two, uh, two bases there. Yeah, I mean, a two base mech all in, not something you see too often. <laughs> but Keen here brings out a very cute timing attack. And uh, all, the, all the SCPs in the world, all the drills, not going to help you in this one. Hero Marine just caught completely unaware. You know, he's been so defensive throughout. And oh. this time, Keen just surprised him with such a wild play. His tank gets picked off there as well. Great scan, of course, by Keen. Look at that Halley, and he's having a field there. Yes, <laughs> light him up. Oh, some satisfying shots there. Oh, that's the happiest Hellion in the world, man. A bunch of SUVs lined up and nothing to protect it. That orbital will go down as well. Hero Marine's going to land his Vikings, but that's not a fight you ever want to take. GG, Keen with the surprise two-base mech timing wins the series in the end. Yeah, really nice way of playing that.
It was interesting to see both players just spam the auto turrets down yeah. to try and win that fight. I really thought one side was going to land the interference matrixes on the other one's ravens. But I think they both just kind of realized, hey, wait, we're both a little bit surprised this fight is going down the way it is. Just drop the spells, try to land it. But we had like, what, five, six tanks versus like three or something? Yep. It just wasn't enough. But obviously the, where the fight happened, that's, that's never where the fight is supposed to happen. Because Hironi was the three base player. He doesn't have to fight in the middle of the map, yeah. even though it was slightly closer to his side and it was on Keen's side. But he still didn't have to be there. The idea of sieging up into a choke point is obviously great. But with Ravens, whether it's Interference Matrix or all its other turrets, it's just not that uh, dangerous in that phase in the game because there are no Marines to protect those tanks anyway. Anyway. He was also, you know, sieging during the fight there. Wasn't quite able to get it up. Definitely saw Keen being a little bit more decisive under pressure. We're going to continue with these maps. As you can see, so many players down here competing for their spot in the IEM Katowice group stage. We'll be right back, guys.